Give me the ball, alligator. Take the stroke and move on, or drop a new ball somewhere else. A gator can close its jaws faster than you can react to it. My name is Frank Robb. I have called alligators for the state of Florida through their nuisance alligator program for going on 29 years now. Today, we're gonna look at alligator and crocodile attacks and TV and movies and judge how real they are. Their sight underwater is is pretty good. It's not as good as it is above water, but it's good enough where if they wanna find you, they're gonna find you. That is how they lay in the water. They, they'll lay just kind of chilled out with their arms hanging out from both sides and the tail kind of back there. They can sense something below them moving around and not be looking at it. You could be Michael Phelps in your uh, prime and you're not gonna outswim an alligator. This ain't gonna happen. They swim faster underwater than they do above water by quite a ways. They can swim up to you know probably about 20 something miles per hour. Yeah, they can, they can get going pretty quick. I've heard so many arguments over the years about how to get away from an alligator safely. You run in zigzags or you, you know, you run in a straight line. They're not gonna chase you. It's not, not something they're gonna do. But if you're trying to get away from one, you just make yourself big. You make some noise and you back away. Gators in homes are very common. Now chasing you around under your home or in your home or chasing you around anywhere outside your home that's not realistic. The last one I got at somebody's house, and this was during a hurricane, and whenever she turned around to go back in her house, here was this alligator that had walked in, was on top of a shelf in her bedroom, trying to get out the bedroom window, trying to escape. He wanted nothing to do with her. He was trying to get away. The last thing they want to do is have an interaction with you. I would rate these clips from Crawl on a scale from one to 10 with a very solid one. For Crawl, I actually did the safety tips that came out with the DVD. Whoever worked on the anatomy on this had it spot on. I mean, they have the things, the ISOs around his mouth. They're sensory organs, so alligators have those, they look like little dots around their face. On crocodiles, they have those little dots or these sensory organs, which are like underwater ro a, a radar or sonar. Their eyesight is on, on par with any bird of prey. I mean, they have very, very good eyesight, and they have something we call a nicotating membrane, which will fold over their eyes. It's a second eyelid. It's like, it's their underwater goggles. They would pick you up from underwater and pull you down, and there would be no him looking at you beforehand. He's not gonna let you know he's there. He's just gonna pick you up and take you. A crocodile that size, yes, could bite through pretty much whatever he wants. People look at him via drones sometimes, and they get their drones eaten quite often. People get too close to the animal. It's almost like they're harassing it, and they'll get tired of it because they'll, they'll pick a bird up. They'll just reach up there and grab it and pull it down. That firearm with an animal that size is not gonna make a whole lot of difference. They have these things in their back called osteoderms. It's a solid piece of their back. This is how they thermoregulate. Each one of these are connected together to make a big piece of armor, and their blood circulates through this. this is how they get warm or cold. Uh, a bullet hitting one of these on an animal that size would make no difference. Again, imagine an animal that size would have a, a tooth probably the size of your hand. They bite each other, and it's a lot worse than any bullet could ever be. Those would not be two things you'd find in the same area by any means, but if you have a crocodile who is as big as that one's supposed to be, if there was a bear in the area he was in and it was on the shoreline, if, if he wanted a bear, he would have himself a bear. Our American crocodile is a big fish eater. They like fish, but they'll also eat small mammals. Pretty much whatever they can get their mouth on, they're, they're happy to have. People are not, not one of those things. I'd give it a six. Give it a solid six. You wouldn't be holding a snare like that with bait in it and hoping the animal would come over to you and go into the snare and take the bait while you're holding it all. It's not, it's not how that works. While saltwater crocodiles get a reputation for being very aggressive, if you have something dead out there hanging out for him, he might, he might need a minute to think about it. It's not gonna, not gonna be something that's gonna happen immediately. What he's using there is a cable snare. It's something we use for alligators and crocodiles both when we're doing research. Uh, the way it works is you go to, you put this thing around an animal's neck and it cinches shut and you can pull the animal to you and catch it. It's not the way you would really want to approach a saltwater crocodile, 
especially an animal of that size. So if we're dealing with alligators or crocodiles, uh, what, we'll, what we typically do is we'll catch them with a fishing rod, then you can use a rope or a snare. Do what you need to do with them and then let them back loose. They're, it's pretty easy to let the snare loose. You would never want to attach it to your boat. It's just kind of ridiculous. So, I mean, no, no part of the clip really made any sense. There's been instances where we've had alligators bite people's boats. Those are animals that have been fed, and they're associating these people who are out in their boats fishing with the fish they're bringing in, because they're like, hey, here's an easy way to catch, it, catch food. I'll wait till this guy pulls a fish in, then I'll go over there and try to grab it before he gets in his boat. So sometimes that kind of thing happens, but it's not typical by any means. A crocodile that size, again, historically they got that big, could take a boat down for sure. Realistically, there wouldn't be a whole lot of reason for him to do that. This clip would be rated a nice solid one. The way that it was handled from the beginning, not, no part of it was realistic. That's alligator for growling. Alligators communicate by a series of bellows, growls, hisses, they do communicate um, for sure with each other that way. And it sounds a little bit something like this. <laughs> for sure an alligator can jump like that and, and grab something, without a doubt. I mean, if you have one cornered somewhere where he can't get out of it and he's trying to defend himself, yeah, they're gonna lunge at you, they're gonna jump at you, and they're gonna snap at you, but it's not the situation they want to find themselves in. It's pretty realistic. I'd say, let's give that an eight. <laughs> this is supposed to be in India, and these they're showing American alligators in India. It would either be the Indian gharial or the uh, saltwater crocodile you can find in some places in India as well. So they got the they got the species wrong. They're not a communal eater whatsoever. Those animals are used to eating together. Alligators in the wild, you're not gonna find sharing a meal does not happen. If they've got something and they wanna rip a piece of it off, that's how they'll, they'll take their prey and rip a piece off in order to have that right then and there. <laughs> Alligators and crocodiles both, they can digest just about anything. They have something we call gastroliths in their stomach. They're eating bones. If they can digest bones, then a piece of cloth is nothing. I'd give that a two. If you factored in the way they were eating together, I mean, you, as soon as you saw that, you'd immediately know that is not a wild situation. That's somewhere in a farm system or in a zoo. It's very common that one will kind of make his way through an area calmly if he's just kind of motoring around. If they're going real fast somewhere, they're not gonna do it on top of the water. They're gonna be stealthy about it and do it underwater. Crocodiles are ridiculously strong. They're a very powerful animal. There's no person on this planet that can match strength with one. There would be no reason for him to go knock someone off there. That crocodile could have easily reached that chandelier with no problems whatsoever. You're, and you're looking at a crocodile that's 15 plus feet long. Yeah, no, you're not safe. There's a big misconception that their mouth shuts very easily and stays shut very easily with a little bit of pressure. That is not true. They have a, a giant, enormous amount of power in opening their mouth as well. We use tape, so we'll use, electricians like to talk, call it uh, electrical tape. It's really alligator tape. We use that to wrap their mouths up and we'll usually cover their eyes at the same time because it makes them a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> I don't care if you're Arnold Schwarzenegger in your prime, you're not getting away with doing that. He'd fling you off like a bug and it, you'd, be, you'd be lunch so quick. I would give this a one. While it was a lot of fun, it was not realistic. Realistic looking animal, not realistic looking actions. Oh, that. Gators in pools are a very common thing. Traditionally it's because of one one bigger gator will run the smaller one out and put him in a pool where he's trying to escape, where he knows he has his own little secret spot, his own little alligator haven. But down there in Florida, we have, we're surrounded by a lot of salt water. Alligators don't have salt excretion glands like crocodiles do, so they have to be able to go from freshwater body to freshwater body. A lot of times that's what it is. They're, when they're moving, it's an easy spot to drop off and kind of chill out for a day and recover. <laughs> That is realistic. The alligator would just kind of go, whatever, buddy. Like, uh, I'm chilling out, man. It's my, it's my relaxed day. 
It's my spa day. They're gonna be underwater most of the time. I'll usually kind of have a have a conversation with them, get them to kind of kind of put their head through a rope and catch them that way. I'd give that one a nine. Alligator being in a pool, very common thing. Him turning and snapping at the guy when he was seeing the pool, that part about it was kind of goofy because he's gonna sink and go hide. It only takes one turn time feeding an alligator or a crocodile for them to go, man, this is an easy way to make a living. Just hang around the people, let them throw me things, and I can save all that energy I would be using otherwise. They're not gonna go after you, so they get very used to people. You should never be feeding wildlife in general. Definitely not crocodilians, because they associate people with that food very quickly, and that's how terrible things happen. It's not necessarily you that are, might not be worried about it, but the next person to come up there might not know that's a fed animal. In the wild, American crocodiles are actually even more secretive and ghost-like than the American alligator. They want nothing to do with you. They're a very, very secretive animal. They would not approach you the way these are approaching here that have been fed. As soon as something hit the water, they're gonna be looking at it like it's food. Yeah, if you tried to run and jump across crocodiles, you'd only do it once. It just it doesn't work out so well for you. If you're rating it, looking at the realistic uh, possibility of crocodiles and alligators approaching you in an alligator farm, it's pretty realistic. If you're looking at the realistic ability of running across crocodiles, that's not gonna happen. So you gotta give that one like probably a solid seven. Gators on golf courses are a very common thing. Pretty much any golf course you're on in Florida will have gators in it. There are a lot of behaviors that change completely when an alligator's on a golf course. They get fed a lot. Um, the ones that aren't getting fed are getting used to people walking by them and golfing around them and moving around them all the time. So they get, the alligators get complacent, the people get complacent. Give me the ball, alligator. Take the stroke and move on. Or drop a new ball somewhere else. Don't You don't play those kind of games. A gator can close its jaws faster than you can react to it. There's this misconception about alligator wrestling. That's not a real thing. It's That's an entertainment thing. There's no type of reality involved in that. As my uncle always says, you don't tempt the devil. There's no reason to tempt things like that. I'd give it a one. The way the clip played out with him jumping in the water after it and wrestling it, headbutting it and elbowing it, you wouldn't be coming back from that. He jumps up kind of from a, from a front and above it and just jumps on the animal, puts a knife through its skull plate. No part of that makes any sense. They can't, they do have a blind spot directly behind them, but that's not how this was approached. Their head is not a weak spot at all. And if you watch this, this clip, he actually puts the knife through the animal's skull plate, which I don't care if you're Wolverine, you're not putting, you're not putting a knife through that thing's skull plate. That's a super, super thick bone that you, a, a knife is not gonna go through. For realism, that is another solid one. There's been so little turned out in the movie world uh, with crocodiles, and it's, it's crazy when you're saying Lake Placid is the most realistic one, but so far it's where it's at. In Florida, where we're at, I get alligators out of culverts or water structures all the time. There's all these water structures between neighborhoods. That is part of their environment. That's a place that they spend a lot of their time in. It's a very common thing. If people realized how many alligators were under their neighborhoods, it would probably freak them out as well. I've caught hundreds of alligators out of situations exactly like that, where sometimes it's a 36 inch pipe, but sometimes it's a pipe you can duck walk through and you uh, you walk through there and you, you meet him and you have a conversation with him. He goes for uh, a walk back out with you. Normally when you're, because you're usually crawling through, you crawl hands and knees on until you meet the animal, you get a rope on them and you pull them back out. I'll call the sheriff's office or the fire department or call a couple of friends and have them help me get him back out the top. They do act different in different situations. Like you come across an alligator in a culvert pipe, he's gonna stand his ground He's gonna say, this is, this is my spot, my area. You turn around and go back. I'm not gonna turn around and go back. They're not gonna run away from you. They're gonna stand their ground. You better start backpedaling in a hurry. I've never heard about a situation where an alligator uses his tail to knock somebody over. When you're in the middle of catching one, um, when you're walking up behind them to get on them, 
they will sweep their tail back and forth to try to keep you away from them, but they're not, they're not out there uh, trying to knock you out with their tail, not the way it works. It's strong, yeah, it's strong for sure. Their tail's strong. Not something to be overwhelmingly concerned about by any means. You wanna worry about the sharp end. I'll give this one an eight because of an alligator and a culvert pipe. Very common thing. They're most active at dawn and dusk, and yeah, at nighttime is usually when they're walking out, when they're going out and feeding. It's funny, some of the biggest alligators I've ever caught were in the smallest water bodies you could ever imagine. Maybe in a couple inches of water and kind of laying in mud and you'd never know they were there. You put yourself in... <laughs> it's not uncommon to see them in a place like that as they're kind of traveling through, as they're looking to pick something up. There are people that uh, go fishing and duck hunting and stuff like that that will walk through an area sometimes like that and step on one or kick one and take a bite from that. Usually it's a, it's a mistake bite where they'll turn around and bite something and go, whoa, that was not something I was looking to bite. <laughs> Having one roll you up and kill you, that's taking it a whole different step past reality. If there was deep water nearby, the animal's gonna take you and pull you to the deeper water. It's not necessarily gonna be rolling around with you. Pretty not realistic. Uh, just not things you need to worry about, but I, I, give, it a, I give it a two because it is semi-possible. My favorite scenes I watched today were Lake Placid and Alligator. Lake Placid, uh, just because of how realistic looking that animal was, and then Alligator there at the very end, the film Alligator. Alligators and culvert pipes, if people had any idea, it would melt your minds. If you like this video, why not click on the next one?